Welcome to the Zach Religge Cast podcast YouTube video interview program that features me talking to some of the best and brightest in the atheist slash secular slash awesome community. This is episode 227. I recorded this interview with myself on July 1st, 2020. Thanks to Amy Cool for being on a couple weeks ago talking about the ups and downs of being involved in the trans community so please check out the ginger snaps and anything amy's associated with is good stuff and just pay attention see you know the latest thing is the government trying to make sure that trans people can't stay in homeless shelters i don't know what what's left that they haven't taken away from trans people so bring them into your life show them love and show them that you care that's all you can do sometimes because the powers that be right now are assholes so this week you know as much as i wanted to do a sitcom very special episode about all the many deep dark issues that we are dealing with as a country right now and in many cases not dealing with i want to talk about goats i know how privileged i am and the fact that we're able to hire goats to come into our yard and live in our yard for five days and basically eat the crap out of our yard is... I don't even know how to explain it. The experience was quite enriching. It was fun to have animals around. You know, we're used to our cats, which of course we love, but they're pretty useless. Um, these goats, well, it's kind of like... If somehow power napping all day that the cats do is combined with people's yard work, but it doesn't. So the goats come in, they eat a lot of stuff, they uh, rest, they're very cute. They sometimes even let you pet them, but they probably think that you're bringing them food. So, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad in that case. In any case, that's pretty much what I talked about. I asked all the important questions, or answered all the important questions about. Why would someone rent goats? What do you get out of it? What's the experience like? Uh, will my life ever be the same? Probably not. So anyway, uh, let's start the monologue, I suppose, this week is the way you would put it. Out of the way, you... Welcome to the Zachrilich Cast. Hey, um, it's gonna be a weird show. So I can say that yes, I have reached out to potential guests over the past few weeks. I can't say that I've been very good at the follow up aspect of it. And, um, one thing I've learned about doing a uh, podcast is that sometimes you can ask people and they can be really excited about being on the show and you can get them right away. And sometimes you get people who are a little busier because they have a book that they're promoting or they have a YouTube channel and they're doing these videos and sometimes they're just not available. So that's why we're going to talk about goats. So this is the dragon smoke I poured before because as we all know on this show, when you have a stout, you're supposed to let it warm up a little bit. And then I'm gonna mix a little white there so we can do a little of the cuvee. There's actually a debate on one of my beer sites whether a golden stout or a kind of a light stout is actually a real style of beer, but I don't know, it tastes real. Anyway, so... Yeah, I don't even know if I should mention names because they're all say they've all said yes, but they haven't actually appeared in this room yet. So I tend not to to spoil the show. And I'm just teasing the two um, people in the chat room because they were the ones who were like, "Sure, talk about goats." I'm, it's I'll say now it probably won't be 45 minutes, but you never know. Um, in any case, we bought this house in 2011 and 2010 I think it's 2010 so we've been here nine ten years 
And the people who lived there before did a lot of landscaping. Um, landscaping is something that you have to constantly do. Um, not just look at your yard every like three months and go, ooh. Um, so we learned it the hard way. Uh, so we brought in some landscaping companies to look at our yard and say, hey, what would it cost to fix this yard? And they were like, well, how about this large amount of money? And that'll be a starting point. And we're like, wow. Um, we knew we were going to spend money, but we were thinking, is there a more cost-effective and cuter way to solve our problem? So we reached out to, I think it's called Get Your Goat Local Company. Uh, I'll include a link, even though it's only um, applicable to Atlanta people. I don't think they franchise goats, um, goat rentals. But yeah, the whole concept of goat rentals, um, <laughs> no maintenance plants. Those, I don't know. I feel like in our yard, everything just grows like crazy, even though we have tons of trees. So there's a lot of cover, but you know, what we have grows really well. The English Ivy heard the motherfucker was who brought that shit over some British motherfucker. We have joked about changing our backyard to put in like a hot tub and then put like a water slide leading into it. Cause our yard kind of slopes down. So that's an excellent idea. In any case, uh, I believe the cost of goats was about a quarter of the um, landscape cost. And that was just to maybe get started on the backyard. We have a front yard too. It was pretty torn up. So we decided to get the goats. And I believe from the time we got on their list, it was four weeks or so. But of course it was a little shaky. So they told us, you know, I don't know. I forget when we originally reached out to them, that would be like, they'd hear, we'd hear from them in like two or three weeks. So I think it was like four weeks later, we finally got a text on a Sunday morning from the booker who was like, I'm coming to your house today. So he came to our house on a Sunday morning, did kind of a view of our entire yard. And then he left and said that the people would be in touch with us. So a couple hours later, my wife gets a text saying that, oh, they're coming. Like the goats are coming. It was Sunday, two o'clock ish. I think I was about to take a nap. And then I was like, well, I better stay up and see what happens. What happened is, these two people came to our backyard. They installed this um, electric fence. Now it's electric fence that you have to like attach to a, like a generator. So, you know, it's not permanently electric. Uh, they have to, you know, actually switch it on, but they set up this fence and then the two of them kind of argued and they, uh, we didn't put it on pants. Uh, <laughs> funny joke. Uh, they came to our yard and they, did a lot of weed eating. I actually had mowed the lawn and we weed ate as much as I could, but they did extra uh, because you have to basically set up a parameter for the goats. So the fence comes in and that's what they did. And this is Sunday and they left. That's something this company does really well as they leave. They don't say bye. And we didn't really hear her back. So like around Wednesday, my wife's like, we were assumed we'd have goats in a couple of days. And we started telling like friends and family and people were like looking forward to this whole goat situation. And we're all like, we don't know what to expect. So <laughs> it's a lot easier to do this when someone else is answering a question. And so my wife actually reached out to the owner of the company. He got back to her, said that he was in Savannah and he had basically handed over the reins to his son and you know, things weren't going so well, but we were going to get goats on Friday or Saturday. We have been doing this ongoing Friday 
happy hour with some friends. And we're like, oh, it'd be so cool if we could do happy hour with our friends and have goats to show them. Because we've been talking about these goats for three, four weeks with nothing. You know, a big tease. And also, you know, you sometimes in life you build up anticipation. So we were anticipating this because, you know, we've been stuck at home. And unlike some people in Florida, we haven't um, been gallivanting around and going to bars and stuff. And we're pretty much like, God, we're going to be stuck in this house just seeing the two of us and occasionally a distanced friend or two or a Zoom conference for like six months. And here come the goats. But the goats didn't show up Friday. They showed up on Saturday, um, which was lovely. And it was um, quite a surreal experience, like, so there was like a truck and then there was, it was pulling this really old trailer. It was super ass rusted. <laughs> and from what we could see, there were a bunch of goats in there, but you know, it was parked at the end of our driveway. So we couldn't really see it very well, but we also knew this was, this was one time when we were prepared. Like we both were lined up, we had our phones ready. We were gonna record this shit. So what they did is they set up kind of a perimeter of the fence leading from the driveway where the trailer was all the way to the backyard. And our neighbors who, by the way, we didn't tell any of our neighbors about this. We have a young cupper, couple, cupper, <laughs> cupper tea. A uh, young couple next door who had, had a baby like last November, and we they invited us to the like their housewarming party, and we haven't really talked to them since because it's how social we are. And they were just out in their yard, and we're like, "Hey, by the way, we have goats." Well, of course, look down, look to your right. There are goats, <laughs> and just to just to torment people with uh, a little um, delay. So the guy who came, like there were two guys who were bringing the goats in. And one of the guys started talking to our neighbor. Our neighbor is from England. So he has this British accent. Although it sounds a little Australian, not Eli Bosnick Australian, but actual Australian, like authentic. And one of the goat guys was like, ooh, I want to go to London. And they had this like 10 minute conversation. We're like, we want to see fucking goats. We're paying for, actually, we haven't paid anything yet. <laughs> we still haven't paid him a dime. Uh, but we... I've been waiting for goats forever and you're having this conversation about going to London, how expensive it is. And oh, by the way, they aren't letting you in because you're a fucking American. Ugly Americans have all been banned from Europe. Oh, it's lovely. All the stuff that we um, were afraid of that now is just like, eh, you know, the world has changed. So eventually they get to unleashing the goats. Now the goats come with a few uh, side items, uh, one being two dogs that were kind of hurting them. And these are called Pyrenees. They're like really fluffy, like they're just super fluffy and big and loud barkers. So the dogs lead the way. And I put a video on Facebook that was it's the running of the goats. This is one of the selling points of this whole thing. So they all go up the hill and there's like one goat that they have to kind of push in there, but almost all of them are running. And you're just like, how many goats exactly do we have? Because we still don't really have an accurate count. I think we have 29, but the dogs and the goats all end up in our backyard. And at first the goats seem a little disoriented, but then they get to the eating. Our backyard is just a ton of trees and a ton of ground cover and a bunch of English ivy and the ivy is choking the trees. And we have a, like a fence in the back. We have a fence on the left and right, which is what you know, marks our property and our neighbor's property. And the goats are there and then the guys are like putting away the fence that leads them and then, you know, hooking up the electric fence. One of the goats actually climbed over the fence into their neighbor's yards. The two neighbors who are watching this 
And they were like, yeah, go ahead in our backyard. We need you, you know, clean up our backyard too while we're at it. And our neighbors to the left who are older and have actually lived here almost as long as these houses have been up. They've been here since 1970. Um, they actually were watching. And I've only talked to them once since we've lived here. And it was the guy telling me that I need to get one of our trees cut down. This damn expensive. So like, thank you. Um, I'll consider that. Um, I believe it's a mix of male and female. We have horns and non-horns. We have uh, a bunch of all kinds of goats. They have lots of different color markings. I was wondering if it would be possible for me to share that running on goats video. Uh, so far, we've taken a lot of video in the past five days. The part that was frustrating Oh, there it is. Now yeah, let's see if that works. One part that was frustrating is like on the first day we were here, uh, it started raining. Good. Let's see if this works. <laughs> I'm trying to share a screen. Uh, maybe I'll edit this out, but that's me in editing. So yeah, probably not. Let's see if it lets me. There we go. Still kind of tiny, but for the people here who've already seen it like 20 times, so this is the running of the goats. I'm showing the video right now. And you can see our neighbor speaking in his British accent. And you just see him running and there's just more goats and there are more goats and there are more goats. And then there's the last one that's just kind of, you know, holding up the rear. Let's see if I can cut that out or not. There we go. Look at that. See, on the first day that we had them, uh, it rained. And what was weird is when it was raining, they were just, like, standing there. And I felt bad for them because it was really wet and like the first night happened and then they're just still standing. And we had a stump where he like cut down this tree and there was like one goat standing on the stump and they were all like fighting for access to the stump. We had a little bench in our backyard, a bench that was disintegrating because it's just been sitting in our backyard for like five years. And like one goat was like on the bench and like anything that was a little bit elevated, they were battling over. But it was really cool to see that first night to like go out and then they're just the dogs kind of herd them all into one area and they're just all sleeping in these big lumps together. And, you know, they look like dogs or cats, you know, although when you see them up close, you know, they have the horns they have these like almost like rear view mirror eyes that like go across and like are a lot bigger than ours, but they're sort of on the side. And they're looking at you like they're really contemplating you, but they're really just wondering if you're going to feed them more stuff. <laughs> yeah. Editing. My dirty word. Uh, not my safe word. Unbonk. Anyway, so, yeah, they were up there. And after a couple of days, we we're kind of wondering, like, well, at first, you know, our neighbor said something that we thought it was like, after like, um, you know, six hours, eight hours, won't they have eaten the whole backyard? And no, definitely not. We have a massive backyard. I don't know if it's, I mean, it's only like quarter acre, um, but it's, it's a lot. And there are all these trees here. And so finally by uh, yesterday, they had done a pretty good job. Like they had almost done too good a job. Like we have a, a shopping center behind us and I was in our man cave downstairs and actually one of the lights from there was actually going through and it had been blocked before because there was all this ivy and they had eaten it and they had pretty much cleaned it up. I mean, there's still some ground cover. There's still some areas. I feel like they probably could have done another day, but yesterday they came back and told us they were going to move them to our like side yard so we got to see running of the goats 2.0. And of course I was ready for that. 
as you know I would have been. And, you know, you know running the goats 2.0, was it as good as the first one? You know, it's not, it's not electric boogaloo, but, you know, it's still pretty good. Actually, I don't know if I posted it to Facebook and it's on my phone. And for some reason, getting stuff from my phone to the computer, I forget it. It's not happening. Would I recommend goats? Um, clearly, in our case, yes, although... We're rocking around the backyard. They finally got rid of all the extra fence because now they're in our front yard. There's a lot of goat poop back there. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna take. Um, in bonk is three syllables. Hmm. Maybe in Florida, uh, it's gonna take a while to clean that, <clears throat> clean that up. And and what they tend to do is they tend to. There's like all these little stalks coming out of the ground and they've eaten all the green parts, but they didn't eat the the stalks. So we have to, we have, there's some cleanup to do. I mean, we're going to have to get a landscaping company or have me use our weed eater for like 27 consecutive weekends. I knew Deborah was worried about the dogs. So this is a part that maybe I didn't like as much about the company so they would come once a day and they would bring these like plastic giant plastic containers full of food so these dogs just tore that food up and if a goat got within like 50 yards of them they were growling and the goats are some of them are bigger than the dogs but they were not fucking with these dogs they would get like on the very edge of testing them, but they wouldn't. And the dogs would eat that food so quickly. Like I had a, a friend and I, uh, my friend Don, and he let me um, babysit his dogs and he had four. And three of the four, if you, when you fed them, they ate their food in like 10 seconds. And the fourth one was kind of playing around with it and the rest would push them out of the way to eat that food. And that's what these dogs did. So they would get fed once a day, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's like two pounds of food. So I think it was plenty. And maybe they're a certain breed that they only need to eat once a day. I'm not totally sure. Um, there was one time where they like showed up at 11 one day and then three the next. So it was like 28 hours. So it felt bad for the dogs. But the dogs seem to be doing okay. The only thing is that those dogs are very territorial. So they are defending this new territory. So our neighbors have dogs. And then a neighbor, two houses down, have dogs. And those dogs would like run to the border of their little fiefdom and they would bark at them. And now that they've moved to the front yard, like last night they were barking until like one and then they were starting to bark again at like six in the morning. So we hadn't slept terribly well. I think my wife's a little anxious about this whole thing. Like she's been worried that a goat's going to get out. Like a goat escaped right when the people were there. And then <laughs> since then, you know, no escapes. Although if a goat got away, would we actually know? I don't I don't know about that. And really, I thought it might be a little funky, and it was kind of when you were in the range of them, but I don't know. I mean, it's only worse than like a dog would. It's funny that like grew up with dogs and now like if I'm around a dog, I'm just like, God, those things stink. <laughs> My cats, of course, smell immaculate, because you know. Um Love those weird things to your senses, apparently. <clears throat> but yeah, it's been a it's been a good experience. Um, the front yard ex experience has been totally different because now all the neighbors are like who walk by are seeing them. And like when I was doing the pre-show on Facebook, it was um, this like whole family's in our front yard, and it's like, yeah, look at the dogs, and then everybody's like walking around in our front yard, and we're like, well. <laughs> And they set up the, the front yard. They put the fence like in our neighbor's yard. And then the neighbors came by and I had met the husband. I hadn't met the wife before. So we had a like, talk, you know, welcome to the new world. Like she was wearing a mask or he was wearing a mask. She wasn't. And I didn't want to get too close. And, you know, like introverts, this is a glorious time because staying away from people is a good thing. And when you're, exercising and you're on one side of the street, somebody's coming on your side, you just go to their side and it's not, you're being rude. You're being considerate. Isn't that lovely? 
Uh, so we had a little conversation and they were fine. Like the delineation between our yards seems more, um, you know, up in the air than maybe it was before. And they seemed okay. And they liked looking at the <laughs> goats, I suppose. And yes, the question is, would we name these goats since there are like 29 of them? Clearly no, but we did name one greedy because two of the biggest goats tended to get like on their back hooves and eat the ivy. But when we come by, this one really big goat with horns, speckled ears would just if we threw them anything, like I'd grab like a leaf next to me and throw it in there, that goat would get it and would come after the other goats who even tried. And it's one of the rare times that I actually won a debate because we were debating which goat was greedy. It turned out the one I thought was greedy was greedy. So greedy as horns. Like today I was putting extra because they got to the side yard and they're they're we thought they're going to be gone today and they're going to be gone tomorrow and they they've devoured that area. There's not a ton left, so we we're throwing some like yard scraps over the fence and those goats were going nuts over it. And Greedy was the one uh, who was there. What would be a hippie motivation? There's been this um, ongoing thing, like maybe later in life we would. Uh, get a farm like there are already people living on the land who take care of it and we just kind of live there you know the kind of thing that the commies are trying to end in our country <laughs> like private ownership and being like landlords and stuff but having animals around you know clearly we're animal people with our cats and by the way those dogs were barking at our cats and our cats were like bored <laughs> almost they would get a little freaked out, but then they'd be like, oh, those dogs are barking at us and they're not coming in. So we might, um, Grace Alexander, who's on my show a long while ago, she was someone I met at a local atheist meetup and then moved to Uruguay for, for many reasons. And she has a farm and she has goats. And she says there's like one male and three females and all the females are pregnant. I'm like, there you go. There you go, goat. So... Maybe sometime down the road, owning uh, goats could be a thing. But we're going to be sad when they go. I think they said um, that they would come by tomorrow morning. Although in a way, it's been a little weird because it's been like, it's a holiday week, so work hasn't been as crazy. But you want to spend as much time hanging out with goats as you can. Goats are work, clearly, you know. Yeah, it would be good to get her on because, um, you know, when I initially talked to her, the whole concept of, like, Americans living overseas was, like, weird. And now it's like, well, which countries will take us? And then we might need to, like, really consider uh, countries for as much as, you know, there were a few good SCOTUS um, results over the past couple of weeks. Uh, some have been not so great. Just like, yeah, give all the money to religious schools. Yeah, they don't pay taxes, but what the hell, you know? And that's clearly, that's what our government is now, is just like for people to take as much money as they can. And then everybody who actually needs services and money, like, no. Like, you know, oh, a billion dollars to the police? Sure. Ten bucks for a, for a teacher to get more supplies? We may not have schools anymore. So it's hard to say because, like, you know, Deborah's the the SCOTUS expert of us, but there seems to be like, hey, there was a good result. Uh, yeah, you can't fire gay people for being gay or trans people for being trans. Oh, they just passed this thing saying um, that they can just blow up a, a mountain for some natural gas. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the liberal darling, joined them. So, you know, that sort of stuff. And the DACA result. But the, yeah, giving money to religious schools. I feel like there's like one of those a week, you know, like the whole um, abortion decision that was like a, a clearly like, let's make some shit up to try to get abortion clinics closed. And it still was only a five, four decision. Like, you know, 
gay marriage decision was five years ago, but it was five to four, <laughs> you know, when we ended racism and discrimination against gay people. And now we're just all going to die together. Don't tell me I'm making points. That's not what this show is about. It's not about me making points. That's for damn sure. So I don't know, 27 ish minutes in, I'm just going to wait to see if any questions come up um, from Deborah from the uh, COVID hotspot of Florida. I, I feel like Georgia's close behind. I don't know how things are going in Vermont, but, <laughs> but it seems like poorly. It seems like all the, I don't know, we're, we're, we've, been post, we've been post truth for a while. Now we're just kind of realizing that's the case. We're just like, how soon will we forget about the latest interesting questions? Well, you tell me, I didn't know if you had, had goats or are there goat questions that are still pending because I feel like I answered them, but you know, anybody, anybody, Bueller, Bueller. I mean, one thing is happening is July is a clear time where everybody's like, well, we've beaten this. So all the states where they've been like, you don't have to pay your mortgage or pay your rent, that's ending this month. So all these people who have lost their jobs in the past few months may end up on the street. And, you know, 1200 bucks apparently is enough for people for like half a year according to a few people. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, Florida is a disaster. That's, that's what I've heard. I'm actually taking, so I'm a contractor at my job. So anytime I don't work, I don't get paid. I'm taking Monday off. Friday's a quote unquote holiday. I'm actually happy that I work for a company where there's only like six holidays the entire year because those are the only days I know I'm not getting paid. So Friday and Monday, and then tomorrow I'm working, but not a lot of other people are, so it should be pretty relaxed. So we were considering visiting the in-laws. And by the way, the in-laws did come up on Sunday. So my wife's parents and her grandmother had to come up to see goats. And her grandmother's 90 and hasn't been doing very well. She had cancer in her jaw that she... Uh, has recently defeated, but when you're 90, uh, you know, it's a little tough. And what usually with the in-laws, they come down to do stuff. They've come down, like my grandmother's been on the roof cleaning the gutters, but this time for the second time, like ever since we've lived here, it's like, come on down, we'll make lunch. We'll hang out. You get to see goats. You know, I'll talk to my father-in-law about football. And, uh, you know, it was cool to, to see each other because we've only seen each other twice since January. You know, I've, last time I saw my parents was the end of February, although <laughs> we do. I know because my last name is Law. It gets confusing with all in-laws. Well, my parents have figured out how to do um, FaceTime so we can actually see each other. So I actually had my called my mom while the in-laws were here. So they got to. And everybody got to see each other and got to show them the goats. We assumed more friends would want to come by and see the goats. Although um, our friends, the funks did come by last night. So we did a impromptu happy hour last night where they got to hang out and they were uh, wearing masks. All the Don was drinking wine. So, you know, you need a little straw hole for your mask. Is that how you do it? Deborah, do you have a little beverage, like a straw for your, you know, your, your T in quotes, <laughs> vote by mail. Oh boy. You know, I actually saw uh, on the back of a car. One thing I've noticed over the past few weeks is that there actually are Black Lives Matter signs in our kind of suburban town neighborhood, which is cool. And I actually saw one Biden sign. Um, there's a neighbor who had, um, it was like an Obama 2012 sign. They had a Stacey Abrams who ran for governor here and probably won, but you know, our guy 
cheated. So, uh, but that was kind of cool. It seems like in that little bit, things are changing. Um, we, uh, <laughs> we actually joined the, one of those Biden calls where like a, someone who's like a supporter kind of shows you how to like text people or call people to support him. We haven't done anything followed up since. I don't know. It, it, it feels like things are, are leaning that way, but I just don't trust anything. Cause last time it was like Hillary's winning and look what happened. And maybe just cause it's a dude this time enough people will vote and we'll be allowed to vote to, to change things. But it does seem like the Republican party is pot committed to this guy, even though he's been so far from a normal human being, <laughs> let alone a normal politician. Maybe that whole someone who doesn't have experience as president thing, you know, oddly, I'm happy that you know, like Oprah isn't running against him, but Oprah probably would win by a landslide. So who knows? I mean, we had a Stacey Abrams sign, but we don't have a Biden one. I'm sure you get one. And if you can hear, my cat is meowing outside. I don't know. One of the um, potential upcoming guests was on Chris's show, uh, Dixieland of the Proletariat, which is a great podcast name. And there are a bunch of Democratic socialists slash commies who live in Alabama and that's fascinating to listen to, kind of the democratic socialist in the South where even getting like three democratic representatives in your state house is a big deal. So we did take the fucking census. So in your face, Vermont. <laughs> yeah, you should. Who knows what they're going to do with it? But yes, you should. You should do that. So... Yeah, we'll see. Show notes. Do you do you double check the show notes? Does my uh, researcher double check that sort of thing? Anyway, so we'll see. Um, I wouldn't mind doing like some mini shows about what I've consumed because it's all about the books and the shows. My wife has a new Mac with her company thing. So we have access to like all the Apple shows. So I just finished watching the show for all mankind. Cause I'm a sci-fi nut. It's like people may study this in like 10 years, like these new uh, streaming services and all the fucking money they're spending on these shows with pretty good actors, the writing, eh, you know, but it was an alternate history about the space race. What if the Russians get to the moon first and clunky at times, but I enjoyed it. And I just finished watching the end of season one. I think they've already shot season two. Um, you know, we started watching the whole Jennifer Aniston. Um, what was the one about the TV show? My wife used to be in TV, so she always is big on that. Um, but it's kind of like, Man, the production values are great. The actors are great. The writing's kind of, mm. but it's tough when they start a new like streaming service and they don't have like a back catalog. Like the advantage Disney Plus has is that, and this is cable guy, you know, guy who works in cable talking. The advantage of like Disney Plus is they had all the old Disney shows, and the advantage that HBO Max has, which confuses the hell out of people is that they have South Park and they have friends and they have Prince of Bel Air and they have their own shows and they have all the HBO shows. So that's, you know, something. And we'll have to figure out a way to get Disney plus cause we want to see cause Hamilton is going to be on, on the third. And I've actually listened to the soundtrack of that like 50 times. Um, cause we went to a book event with the, um, the guy who was, I think the guy who played Aaron Burr, and he wrote this like short hundred page book about his history of being like a soap opera star and then getting on Broadway with Hamilton and then making no money and then it becoming this giant hit. So clearly dimples, dimples, close up, close up. My wife finished her coaching session. So now she's uh, outside checking out our goats. 
but yeah, so yeah, it's a Dixieland of the proletariat. Um, trying to get Steve Shives back on because he has a hundred thousand followers on YouTube, and it's always fun to get him on. Um, yeah, Hamilton came to Atlanta, but it was like you had to buy tickets to like four shows to get tickets for that, so we just passed. Um, what is it? Uh, Vadim, aka Creationist Kaz, one of the potentials. This Dixieland of the proletariat. Uh, reach out to Jared Holt, who does Right Wing Watch, because I think all this right wing craziness. I need someone who's an expert to kind of um, push me through. And then uh, Sakivu Hutchinson, who is the author of Humanists in the Hood and also lives in L.A. So I'd like to hear about her experience with the humanist community and all that. Um, has agreed to be on. I've already read the book. So, yeah, we'll try to set that up. So I think that's like four people. I probably should reach out to more um more people because I know a lot of people can get a lot of people back who have been on before as chaotic as the atheist happy hours were. It's, it was fun to talk to people. I just didn't want to open it up this week. I just wanted to do a show, do a show. So I think that might be it. I don't know if I can do any goat puns like, you know, like I kid what are good goat puns are there. Um, in my wish guest list, I mean, it's just to get him to show up on a particular night and to talk, um, Rakeem Johnson, who has been on the show before he lives in Brooklyn and Brooklyn's having all kinds of crazy protests. Anyone who's been in involved in the protest, cause I've just been staying home would be great because protesting is hard and Americans have been going at it for like four weeks and that's been great. I really should get the, um, what is that? Um, it's the one where they kind of focus on abortion, but they sometimes talk about Supreme court stuff that, uh, podcast. I, I listen to that one sometimes. Um, so that, that would be uh, some good guests and maybe they'd show up. But like I said, reaching out to, people on my level and I don't mean like quality level. I just mean in terms of like listenership, they tend to be people you can probably get a little easier and the people who are call themselves mid level who still have, you know, people in the tens of thousands of followers, that's going to take a little more time. So plus it's holiday week. Um, I don't know what holidays are anymore. You know, people are talking about vacations. I hear that's a thing. Um, I might be taking one of those in September, but we'll see. So anyway, that's a lot of me talking and I think I made, I made it 40 minutes. I really did not think goat talk would be 15 minutes, but there you go. And I still even have some beer left. So I'm going to go see the goats. Cause yeah, when it gets dark, it's the video quality is not as good and they're about to fall asleep. And you know, there's this, you know, the, we want to take care of them. Like we feel like we made a joke about like, Oh, we should foster kittens while we're, you know, stuck at home. It's like, yeah, but we'd keep them. So this is like, we're fostering goats, but the goats are going somewhere else. Um, actually Lyman of the podunk has been doing that in DC. But you know why he didn't show up last time I was talking to Chris cause he was doing that. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll work on that. Cause one thing about this time is it's a unique opportunity. People are listening. So we can make changes. There's a big push to knock us back 50 years, 100 years, 1,000 years. And there's as much momentum to move, move us forward 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. Not climate change version, but, you know, progressive version. So it's going to be uh, a battle. You know, like a couple of goats going head to head. So, <laughs> yeah, DC, yeah. Like they're going to do anything in the Senate or the House. All right. Thank you for indulging me. I'll need to do a legit show sometime in the next week or two. Got a lot of potentials. So it should be good stuff. So you say good night and good luck. That's really dumb. But I just said that. Stay away from the COVID. What you do is you stay low. You just dodge. You say... COVID, I'm going right, and you go left, and you're fine. 
Good night. Good night. Bourbon, that sweet, delicious friend who's always there for you. In light times, in dark times, it's always bourbon time. Live read. Um, for this episode, I'm going to do two versions of the live read. Version one is the serious, here's what's actually going on in the world version. Boom lawyered had uh, an interview with one of the lawyers who was involved with the case of the Louisiana abortion clinic that tried to get shut down by creative yet maybe not too smart anti-abortion people and they actually won their case five to four. So what's it like to prepare for a Supreme Court case uh, in bunk? Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a good one. And also, if you're really feeling like escaping, I mean, anything online where you can just like take your brain somewhere else, we like cooking shows. So I've been watching Crazy Delicious on Netflix and we always watch anything Guy Fieri related on uh, like Food Network, even though we don't have cable anymore, we have some kind of Food Network app or you can watch it. There's like 400 different ways to watch TV-like stuff and cooking shows are fun to watch. You know, sometimes it's like, I would never try to make that, but it's just good to see, uh, you know, people kind of stretch themselves and have fun. So that's my um, advice to you. Have fun with it and also keep track of what's going on. But with people presenting that content to you in a way that you like to to take. So if you want to support the show, um, you know, we're still doing the pandemic version of the Patreon. So uh, I guess I need to start posting some of these goat videos for my Patreons. I know two of them have gotten plenty. Uh, so if you want to support the show, you get extra content. And for now, you don't have to pay for it. So be like Freethinker215, Alan Marks, Human, Chris of the Postmodern Polymath Podcast, Larry Daryl and the other Daryl, and go to patreon.com backslash Zacharledge, Z-A-C-H-R-I-L-E-G-E. So easy to spell, so easy to say. Why am I not the number one podcast in the world? Hard to say. Follow me on Twitter, like the Zacharledge Cast page on Facebook. Send all mail to zacharledge.cast at gmail.com. As I mentioned on this week's show, I have many potential exciting popular guests coming up just a matter of getting them to take the time to show up and talk and i think when they do we're all gonna have a great time so until then let's continue the conversation <laughs>